Okay, don't. I pressed the record button. <clears throat> Doing the whole show like that? No. Only the intro. <clears throat> the whole intro as well? The whole intro, like this. <laughs> Cecil the African Lion. No, my name is George. 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 <clears throat> oh, God. Right. I think I'm ready. I think the levels are okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Hello. Hello. We're back. We are. Back in the... Back in my home den. Your den. The area which we record. Yes, the recording den. After the pub, the pubcast experiment. Pubcast last year, yeah, last week, last rather. Which we will deem a success. I think it was a success. It was great for the, the 20th episode. The only issue I thought we may have had was audio qualities. We had literally no idea how it was at the time. Yeah, but it was all right. It came out all right, didn't it? We were oh. recording blind. All things considered, yes, it was pretty good. Yeah, no test run. And I mean... As content-wise, I mean, it, do, it literally doesn't get any better than a man was, than great. a man coming in that was to borrow a fire that was in the news. It was in an electrical box, apparently. Yeah, I, I saw this in the newspaper. Yeah. So we actually reported that first. We did. So we're a more valid news outlet. You source than the Herald Express. Yeah, or the advertiser. Or whatever, whatever, the, whatever the local paper was. was. Yeah, I'm not sure. But yes, so that was last week. That was 20. So now we're on to 21. Number 21. Is there a fancy number for that? No. Decker. I don't think there is. Something. What's a one? But I do have... I've got something exciting. (gasps) I've got a new feature. Right. Angus hasn't told me about this. He's (laughs) just said there's a feature. This is... I don't actually know what it is. Pure. George has never heard or seen anything to do with this. This is a surprise for me. As I speak. And oh, it's going to be good. I'm not sure if by some miracle we end up on that topic, it will fit in then. If not, it'll have to come at the end. Okay, okay. But yes, we will. Now it's probably only one thing left to do. We do not. We've forgotten to do. He's Angus, and he's George. In quickly, and then we forgot to do a roundup at the end of last week, and but that was just the pressure of the pub. Oh, but it was all yeah. It was just pub, wasn't it? The emotion. The The emotion emotion got to us. Raw, you know, feeling of the evening. (laughs) Feeling of the evening. Yeah, there was a feeling there, you know. It was good vibes. <clears throat> it was. It was a lot of good vibes. Right. Cool. We shall start. Yeah, cool. What's the start of the 10? Have we got one? The start of the 10, we do have one. It's just from it's just from the Independent again. Okay. Sorry. And um, this week they are telling us uh, that Jeremy Corbyn supporters tend to be depressed vegetarians. <laughs> <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's stupid because I n- I know someone who is vegan who constantly posts about Jeremy Corbyn <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> uh, apparently, their typical comfort food includes vegetarian dal or vegetarian bangers and mash. Nice. <laughs> um, then it rewords the opening statement in like like all newspapers isn't tend to dal, do these days. Dal is vegetarian. <laughs> Dal's chickpeas, isn't it? Yeah, I like a that. chickpea curry. Yeah, but I think what you would normally have is you'd have like a chicken dal or a do you? meat dal. I don't know. I've never had a meat <laughs> dal. Mystery meat. <laughs> um, yeah, like on all newspaper stories, you know, you read the headline and then the the byline underneath is the typical corn supporter is prone to depression and not eating meat. So it literally right. just restates this thing again, yep, which is yep, becoming my yep. biggest pet hate. Um, then uh, the most representative member of Labour's swelling ranks of new members is a middle-class Welshman in his early 20s who works for a charity. Okay. Um, it's YouGov research reported by the Times. So it's YouGov. So it is actually... So it's actually real... Well, it's fairly not, legit. Yeah. Um, Depressed vegetarians. Unsurprisingly, the leftist cohort that has recently joined the Labour Party in huge numbers are keen on the internet, where they like to watch YouTube and frequent Jeremy Corbyn's Facebook page. Wow, <laughs> Did, but hang on, have they is has the indep- have they got the actual stats there? Have they misinterpreted them? Is it the depressed and vegetarians, or <coughs> is it specifically depressed vegetarians? Because I imagine that's quite a small 
minority of vegetarians and then a small <coughs> minority of Jeremy <coughs> Corbyn fans. So I'm struggling to believe that that is the predominant thing. Unless it's just that depressed vegetarians take more of these stupid YouGov surveys <laughs> than anyone surveys. else because they've got nothing else to do because they're depressed. I also have never been... Um, I don't think I've ever been surveyed for no, a YouGov. No, I've never been surveyed. Not for YouGov. And also the but other then one, maybe they're done by independent people. Maybe they give you a ring and then... The other one I've never had um, done is when they ring you up and go, what did you watch on telly last night to get those random yeah. figures? Yeah. Do you listen to the I've radio? Never had that. I've never had that no, either. I've never had that. But Not then even... we're ex-directory, so... Oh, God. And we're, out of the, we're on the telephone, we're telephone preference service. We're on that as well. Well, I don't know what I'm on, but I get 52 calls a day from yeah, well, Consumer Lifestyle Direct, please, sir. Yeah, and I think foreign stuff doesn't count. Yeah, well, whatever's going but down. the telephone preference service is great. It gets you off of these. It, then, If your number's on there, it becomes illegal in this country for any any call callers to call you. Well, after after we finish recording this, you can link me to this. Cause it's currently, awesome. It's just called the telephone preference service. I'm it's quite great. likely to have... I think there's one for email as well now. I'm quite likely to have a lawsuit against me if my response is down the phone. They get, they get by the like, time done, properly done as well. The problem like is, like... 50 quid. What happens is, I'm okay with the first, the first one that calls me at the start of the day, and I'll be like, no, sorry, I'm not interested. By the seventh person that's called me from Consumer Lifestyle Direct... I have, I'm lose. I am beginning to lose it. Have you ever had a cold call from Jonathan Ross? No, I have. Really? Yep. It was a recorded, a pre-recorded um, cold call for PPI from Jonathan Ross. That is horrendous. It was like, well, it was either him or like a bang on him impressionists trying to be. Basically, if you're trying to be that person, you may as well be that person. So yeah, it was I, I on the mobile, and I was like. You know, because and that's why I, I hate automated things. They just pee me off because you pick it up and you say hello. Yeah, and it's and just you get an automated thing. Anyway. And just talk, oh, it's just, oh, just piss off. But it's a bit like, um, you know, when people used to think it was funny to record an answer phone message that's like, yeah, hello, yeah, I'm good, thank you. Oh, oh, oh this is a message, and you're like, brilliant. <laughs> 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 when you start to have a conversation with the answer phone machine, oh. I'm glad that fad died out. Yeah, I people don't record answer phone things anymore. I wouldn't even know what mine was. I wouldn't know how to change it. It's probably just, you know, the Welcome standard the EE, EE one. The EE Welcome voice to the EE voicemail. Service. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, I sh- I, I'll change mine to a comedy one for this well, week. G- well, I just I think people don't call as much anymore, do they? They tend to IM. Oh, don't say that. You make you sound you make yourself sound, like sound a dad. old. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations on making yourself sound <laughs> way older than sound you like are. Sound like a dad. Yeah. <laughs> or a granddad. It's never been referred to as I am. Yes. Instant. Nobody ever called it that. Well, maybe or someone like, did. I am chat or. <laughs> no. Well, but the thing that's it's beginning to get to that point now where people refer to their favorite messenger app, regardless of what app they actually use. Or what app other people use? So they'll oh, say, I'll just WhatsApp "Oh, I just WhatsApp you." It's like, "No, you'll text me." He's like, "Yeah, but I'll just I'll WhatsApp you." But they don't; they'll text you. Or they'll say, "Oh, yeah, I sent that. I sent you a message. Did you like what? Did you text me?" He's like, "No, no, no. I sent it on Messenger. Sent it on Messenger." Right. So you load up Facebook Messenger, and it's not there. It's like, I was like, are "You sure you sent it on Messenger?" No, WhatsApp. <coughs> and it's sent it on you on WhatsApp, and it's like, "Ah, pick one and stick <coughs> with it." <laughs> it does annoy me. The other thing I find is I have certain group chats on certain with different. Groups of people, providers, in different yeah. on a different provider. Yeah, I know, nightmare. It is. It becomes a nightmare to manage, and then you end up doing crazy things. Like I sent a picture to the wrong person the other day. That was. Was it? Was it okay? Was it? Calamitous? No, no, it wasn't. It was pretty. It took some oh. explaining. I'm not going to lie. It did take some explaining. Was it a dick pic? No, it wasn't a dick pic. But that would have been easier to explain than this one, actually. <laughs> so there you go. That was, so it was about the level of um, oh, what it was. Yeah. So that was. Um, Quite why I had to explain a, a picture of a, like a black and white minstrel man. Just came from nowhere that I hadn't re- responded to for like four Great. months. Okay. Yeah. It was wow. reasonably difficult to explain. But it was perfectly on topic for the other ch- where it was supposed to be going, you see. Well, that's, that's good. I Unacceptable. Suppose. But that's because mm. everybody has a different threshold to be sending to certain people. Yes. Depending on their friends. Yes. But your chances are all of your most recent ones, the ones you're most likely to accidentally send to are all mates that you could probably explain it to anyway. Yeah, apart from on the Facebook app where it goes, you haven't spoken to these people oh. in ages. Oh, and that's then, the worst feature. 
great. I haven't spoken to them for ages yes. for a reason. Yeah, there's a reason why. <laughs> there's a reason why I haven't needed to contact them. Yeah, nightmare. I, I was on Facebook um, the other day, and someone who I had unfollowed, no names, <laughs> he or she, who must not <coughs> be ma- named, came back up on my newsfeed, and I was like, pretty sure I unfollowed you, like, two years ago. So anyway, you go on there, and I'm following them again. So I don't know if Facebook automatically refollows friends after a period of time, it's but that is going to really pee me off. Just delete them. Yeah, but I don't want to unfriend them because I don't hate them. But I also don't want to see their stuff on my news on my newsfeed. So that's why you unfollow. Why are you clinging on? Well, I'm not clinging on. It's just you know. Oh, I can't be doing that. It's not me. You don't want to be a dick about it, do you? <coughs> just because you don't like what they post doesn't mean that you don't like them. True. That's George's an interesting philosophy of the that's day. That's a very philosophical way of looking at it. But then do you not find that they tend to, unless they're like a totally different person in real life, and then to if you were to meet them in real yeah, life, I that's a bit weird. Yeah, I suppose. The person who you unfollowed were those vegans who always post about Jeremy Corbyn, weren't actually they? actually was, yeah. I got <laughs> so sick of her every now and uh, then. There we go, we've narrowed it down. About, we, you know, well, like keep talking, them, so. keep talking. Oh, hundreds of women is there. <laughs> <laughs> Great, feeling good about yourself today, are you? Um, either talking about halloumi or... <laughs> Um, no, not halloumi. Oh, halloumi is the Frick wonder cheese. <laughs> yeah, but not for a vegan, it isn't. Okay. Um, oh, yes, that hummus. is an issue. Either talking hummus. about hummus, hummus, or freaking celery, or <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn. So, what an exciting life! You I'm need. at that if, point where it needs. If to all you can do is eat the vegetable that requires more energy to eat and digest than it gives you. Yep. Jeremy Corbyn's an interesting fella. There's plenty of stuff to talk about with him. I don't dislike him. I, I, I don't like any politicians because they're all a little bit. I don't know what the word is. I don't know. I can't think of a good word. But he, I don't mind. I don't know if he's a politician, but one guy I do like is Kim Jong Un. It's time for Un Watch, Un Watch. It's time for Kim Jong Un Watch. Oh my god, that was amazing. <laughs> It's Kim Jong Un watch. This is oh, where I'll start for ten. I have taken a roundup of the news stories that have been published about Kim Jong this week. Okay, because I realised that there's, there's enough, quite a few. <laughs> there's enough weird stuff comes out about the guy that I could fill some time with a it. segment, a segment every week, because I have multiple news stories lined up already. Right, we shall start off with uh, this week. He has banned sarcasm. Because what? of fears that people only agree with him ironically. Well, I would be killed by aircraft gunmen <laughs> yes. if I even stepped foot. <laughs> well, in we do. We do have a little career. bit. The reason why my work, my like the the cog started worrying for this feature was when Josh actually mentioned on the podcast last week. Was like, I think they just use it to fill column inches. Like every yeah, week, they, they just do it. So then I was like, We can. Why fill don't I? Why don't I? A start off a ten. Weedle all these columns out and then put them, compile them all into one place, so you don't have right. to. Brilliant. And I'll call it Unwatch <laughs> and make a horrible <laughs> intro that was and an good outro. Intro. There's an outro to come as well. Oh, wow. And um, yeah. So, I, yeah, I thought, you know what, well, I'll produce that. Fantastic. So, yes, we'll back on topic. He's banned sarcasm. <laughs> um, he, uh. Uh, he's also, he owns a hotel. He owns a hotel. Yeah, he like... Has well, a he hotel. He practically owns the country. Right, so Ryan, it's right. called Ryan Gang, and it's basically getting destroyed on TripAdvisor. So everybody, right. everybody is going on it and just destroying it, saying it's um, old and cold and being pretty scathing. Actually, I imagine not North Koreans. Hopefully, it's unironically. Otherwise, then we'll be getting two two things. And then, on a final note for Kim Jong Un, watch this week. Uh, more on a more serious note. Mm. He is legit in a place to start doing the whole nuclear weapon testing thing. Again. Yeah, they they did one, didn't they? Yeah, he's got another one. So then, how it sort of is apparently is going to force the US back to um. What was interesting though is negotiating that table. Japan were outraged, which I quite like the idea of Japan being outraged at North Korea. Yeah, because it was quite close to Japan and Russia. It was very close to Russia and China <coughs> as well, and they're all a little bit pissed off that they did it. Which is good, because, let's face it, around that area, if you pee off Japan, you pee off China, and you pee off Russia, you're pretty much screwed, really, aren't you? Yeah, they they don't really give 
They don't really like take any prisoners. Not really. The um, that last earthquake that they no, the last nuclear test actually caused yeah. an earthquake. Yeah, it did. It was like a seven point something, wasn't it? Which is pretty serious. Significant. I'm not gonna lie. But it wasn't. Um, it didn't go very far because it was just on the surface, wasn't it? A seven point whatever is still too big for anyone to be triggering. But yeah, there's a lot of um, there's Sorry. a lot of uh, news out there on Kim Jong. Yeah. On Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. I think for this week, that concludes. Un watch, un watch. That has been Kim Jong Un watch. Now, I have literally no idea how to get back oh, onto I love any that jingle. That jingle was great. How to... I like it. I've got something. So, following on from that, good because I was thinking I the other day, knocked everything out. Of or this. I read online a while ago, and then was thinking the other day about a theory on how to just completely take down the whole of North Korean the North Korean regime in one easy step that would probably still get a lot of people killed but would still end there's going to have to be collateral yeah basically north south korea just open the border oh what so then everybody who doesn't want to be there just sods off just leaves and there's no opposition there's no Nothing stopping them from leaving other than Un's troops. But they're all humans too, and they can all leave if they want to. So basically meaning anybody can leave North Korea that wants to leave North Korea. How does that end the regime? Because without his people, he has nothing. Because his, his, whole, his whole politics, is, I suppose, is based upon the fear of the control over the people. And if they suddenly have an out... An easy out as well, <coughs> relatively easy out. Mm. The whole thing will come crashing down. I th- I'm pretty sure there's a theory I read online, like a way to do it. And obviously, if everybody would have to be involved, so like Americans, Chinese, Indian, how Russian, would we organise this without we would this just, word getting out? Well, we would just we just send send um, humanitarian aid and, and evacuation, and just evacuate as many people out as wanted to leave, <coughs> and just abandon the country. And what if he suddenly gets angry? What's he going to do? fire off any of his nuclear weapons that cause yep. 7.2 Richter scale earthquakes. Yeah, he could do that. But he'd only be able to fire one. Actually, the man who presses the button might not be there anymore. Yeah, he might have left already. Or whoever's in power might realise that his life is probably going to be ending anyway, so he may as well let Kim Jong-un kill him. It is a weird one. But there's a theory, and it could work. It's strange, because a few years ago, if you'd asked me, I would have thought, I would have said that... The people of North Korea were living under this like crazy rule that they re- they only say that Kim Jong has landed on the moon and mm. he's done another perfect round of golf where he's only taken eighteen shots, do eighteen holes, and yeah. he's won all the Olympics and all this stuff. This like state news thing. I would have said to you that they all believed it. Mm. Now, not so sure. I think they all put up this facade to keep the, to just do what they keep have the to do. Because otherwise, you, your family disappears. I still think that a bit of that happens. Yeah, definitely. But it's quite... Um, I, I think they all know that the outside world is different. So it's not... How hard can it be to leave a country? Well, they, the thing is, it relies on being able to get the information to them and but exposing they, the West to them. So but they, they know. See. They've got the internet and things. They don't know, do they? That's the point. They don't have access to the internet. Well, I think that there are there are people in North Korea there's who have dark access. Dark web, yeah. And there's yeah, ways people to get have through. access to the internet. Yeah. So as soon as one person has access to the internet, okay, they're not all perusing Facebook. Did, weren't but they like sending flash drives or something? Was it someone trying to send a load of flash yeah, drives I'm, with information? I'm on... pretty sure they know full well what goes on in the outside world. They know it's very different to the regime they live under. Yeah. The majority of people, or whatever. And it only needs a small amount of Interesting. So I just wonder, how hard can it be to leave that country? Probably not very. Would you have grounds for, um... Uh... I don't know, what would you... Being a refugee? Like That's the thing, see, though, I suppose, what you can do with all the people. Yeah, well, God, we've, people have already kicked up enough fuss as soon as any, any amount of people start moving anyway. Yeah, difficult, isn't it? They're not going to just do that. But the Americans have that new 3 billion ultra-stealth warship. Have you seen it? 
No, I'm sure that it really looks, helps. Them. It looks ridiculous, and on radar, it comes up like the size of a fishing vessel, but it's not. It's like a fuck off massive <laughs> warship, capable of <coughs> taking down a small country. Mm. But it's completely hidden from conventional radar and we other do. systems. They do. They, yeah, America make the biggest warships, but they make the biggest. But warships. this is incredible. Look it up. The guy that um, the guy that's captain of it is called Kirk, Captain Kirk. Really? So it's being nicknamed the Starship Enterprise. Uh, what should I call it? Big new, big American stealth ship. Thirteen billion dollar. Oh, warship. thirteen billion. There you go. Oh, it's just a hell of a lot. It's the most expensive. Just warship. look at the photos of it. It looks really funky. Well, it's massive, and it, the thing is, it's that's like all straight flat walls. There's yeah. no like. Well, that makes it obviously radar safe. Yeah. This is what I was going to say about... Um, the guy I was talking to the other day was saying about how America... Obviously, if you wanted to buy a big warship, a big warship, you'd go to America. Whereas he was at a pub quiz or something, and the, the question was, which uh, army service still use a catapult? And the answer but for is... What, for what, though? Well, who uses, the, who uses a catapult? As a weapon or as something else? Well, just who use, still uses it. The answer was the Royal Navy used it to launch ships, to launch ships from aircraft yeah, carriers. Aircraft, yeah. Now, obviously, these new American ones don't really have that because the old British ones used to have a big lip on the end, like a big. Yeah. It was like a ramp, yeah. So you could to be a lot shorter, so you could like launch the planes into the sky, and yeah. then when they landed on those short ones, they get caught in the catapult essentially. Yeah, there's and like it would a hook wire. up on the wheels yeah. and then slow them down quicker. That's right. So I would actually argue, to a point, that I think the old ones that we used to make were probably more advanced but than this, because this is, this is as long as a runway. It's huge. <laughs> we are going towards, or trying to, although they haven't cracked it really that well yet, is VTOL, isn't it? And STOL as well. Translate, please. Um, VTOL is ver- vertical takeoff and landing, and STOL is short takeoff and <coughs> landing. So like the new F... 16 or you F-32. Say that, but we had a plane, we had the... Yeah, the Typhoon. A Harrier. Typhoon, the Harrier jump jet, yeah. But uh, it got take, it got discontinued from yeah. there. Yeah, so we discontinued it, but we've had but that with for years. The, F, the F-32, whatever whatever the new ship um, airship that we've got from America. That big mega thing, yeah. Yeah, the huge warship, basically airship. Mm. Whatever they freaking call it, I don't know. I'm not a plane enthusiast. <coughs> um, they were going to go for VTOLs. But um, they had so many problems. I think oh, who it's um, st- uh, Lockheed Martin. They had so many problems with oh, it he... that we changed and went to the S toll instead. The short takeoff, short takeoff and landing, yeah, hmm. versions. That's interesting. That, that can land and take off on our aircraft carriers. How how short are we talking for like short? Like short, like fifty meters. Yeah, like nothing. Do you it's reckon? Ridiculous. Do you reckon the pilots' faces are all going to change shape? <laughs> <laughs> like they're all going to get stretch marks. What was on their awesome forehead. though is they flew them from America here. When they were bringing them over, they flew them. Well, that would only take about an hour. Yeah, I don't know how fast they are. Probably like Mac. They're not going to fly at Mac three, are they? <laughs> the amount of fuel it would take. Yeah, but you know when they have these abilities to go like three times the speed of sound. Yeah. Is it just like the absolute fuel drain? Yeah, I was talking to someone that work um at work the other day about it, and they were saying it just melts through fuel. Like so obviously it can do it, but it couldn't do it for... Not for a sustained period. A sustained no. period. It probably wouldn't make it across the Atlantic at full foot supersonic. So my visions of just being able to lap the world... Yeah, I don't in, think... Not in one of those, no. No. In a Concorde or something, maybe. Mm. I don't know what their range was. But they got like new... They're, they're hoping to do like hypersonic, aren't they? What, Commercial what that planes. That, that can do um, London to Sydney in three and a half hours or something. It goes like three times the speed of sound. That's mad. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? That's crazy. Yeah. But it does. All of a sudden, the world just becomes does become a hell of a lot of an easier place to do a lot of things. Mm. If but you could get to Sydney in three hours. But the plan is it flies higher as well. I think so. Is that is that how they do it? Is it a bit like the old yeah. the blackbird and those higher. kind of things? Yeah, which like was the essentially bird. the blackbird was unbelievable. Yeah, but that thing was well, nobody knew about it when it was actually no. in service because that was the point. It was so secret, but. Yeah. That it flew plane above radar and flew above any. Yeah, well, that, it, that was a um, that was borderline spacecraft. Well, it was really. Yeah, they had to wear a spacesuit to be in it. Yeah, and the only time people 
it's there's all those sorts of funny stories about because the public don't really know about that shouldn't have known about that plane but when it when they started people started seeing things and they had to all of a sudden answer questions yeah. where not like home enthusiasts or wow two references to the enthusiast word in one pod you're getting spoiled enthusiasts um the um not like home enthu- again not like home radar people but people on like small airfields yeah, who have access who... to really good yeah. radar equipment all of a sudden tracked something that went faster than went so fast across their screen it like blipped twice and was gone and then they have to report those kind of things they were like what was that was that a broken kit was that or an whatever icbm wasn't it yeah was that some sort of stop using these crazy aeronautical I'm... terms i don't know they're just coming out i don't know <laughs> You, I we learned about that at school. Okay, flying UFOs, flying whatever, flying objects, and they ICBM, <laughs> intercontinental ballistic missile. <laughs> we had to learn about that in history of all subjects when we were doing the Cold War. Okay, wow, good knowledge. Um, they uh, they reported it and they started to talk to the army people and they were like, "Oh, we know what that was, but we can't say anything else." And then, mm-hmm. or then all of a sudden, people are like. Wow, so we actually have made something can yeah. go this fast, like can go so fast across um, radar yeah. and stuff. And there's other stories of when we knew about the Blackbird. So then by that point when it was like well known that it existed, but obviously you didn't see or hear of what it was ever up to. Um, of it like flying into radar, asking questions of people, like asking if it could land or something. And mm. then just going, just disappearing faster than radar. And people are like... I didn't think they ever really used it. Not in active... Service. I don't think they ever used it for anything because it just didn't. Have, we just have a call for it, which is why it <clears throat> isn't around now because there was never a reason to use it. Well, it's gone. It's probably off the back of the um, Cold War. I it's it's gone. It doesn't exist anymore. They don't run them no, because they it, th- there was a, it brought. Although a whole they've probably got a replacement that we don't know. This about. is what that was. What I was, <laughs> that, you, that goes up into the stratosphere yeah. or even above it. Because there's no way that we'd make that sort of technology and then not replace it with something else that somebody already has it, it. or even if it's a drone it's, or something it's faster to go. Up and then across and down. Yeah, than it is to go. You don't like. Yeah, so you don't. Earth, you don't have gravity or whatever, and because essentially, you once have, you've broken it, it's yeah, thinner atmosphere. Thinner there's less things to bump into, which is how yeah. planes. Which is how when rockets go up, they're like, now it's traveling 19 miles a minute, no, 19 miles a second, and you're like, well, that's clearly not happening. Yeah, well, that's how it ends up happening because yeah. you end up there's yeah. less stuff. Less to resistance. Move. Hmm. <coughs> But <clears throat> I remember a while ago, <clears throat> I was just driving to London, and I was going on the M4, and all of a sudden I saw a stealth bomber, you know, like <laughs> the proper triangular yeah. black triangle, and I it was like some sort of War Probably of the Euro Worlds. Fighter or something. No, no, it was a, it was an American. Oh, wh- wh- the, oh, one of the, those the cheese wedge black stealth bomber oh, wow. things, and then I started to Google, so I was like, these don't fly around very often. There must be like some sort of air show on or whatever. No, apparently there was just two ones over from America doing a training exercise. That they'd sometimes come over and do this thing. I was super lucky. That's to why see we were it, talking about it. That's what it was because when yeah. we when we used to work because Angus and I used to work together mm. at the same office, um, and we used to be up based up in the valley, um, in the valley, yeah, the team valley, um, and you often you would get um, jets, um, fighter yeah. jets flying over and going over to Dartmoor and training above Dartmoor. I assume they trained at yeah. Dartmoor doing low altitude flying yeah, and stuff. Doing I imagine. What they up to? I mean, they used to go so fast and used to, obviously, you'd hit, um, they would be gone before, before you even you heard them. them. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, they must be going supersonic in my ignorance. <laughs> yeah. Of course, they're not going that fast. And that's why we were talking about it. And he was like, they weren't going that fast because that fast. <laughs> Just to get from freaking like Bournemouth to Dartmoor, they wouldn't be going supersonic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't think you're allowed to do it over the land unless no. you have like special permission. Yeah, there's areas, I think, but yeah, and and they have to have like clearance and stuff because it is yeah so loud. Yeah, like thunderclaps, super super loud. <laughs> Apparently, when it, when it actually like goes through the the barrier as such, which is a bit of a myth, that's when it like overtakes its own sound waves, which is essentially what happens. Yeah, um, it does make a bit of a bang. But I don't think that's not the problem. The problem is, is also all the other houses that you then go over with your engines full chat yeah, would be loud. so, so loud. Yeah, really loud. Do you reckon they're really wind sealed or they have to have really good fitting air earplugs or inside they're like... No, inside there would be no air movement, I imagine. No, like inside the thing, would it be quiet? Would yeah, you reckon... in the cockpit. Yeah. Yeah. What, well, was silent in the cockpit? 
It would be Actually, quiet. I, it wouldn't be silent, but it'd be quiet. If you were going faster than the speed of sound, you'd be behind. <gasps> would you be able to hear yourself? Would... Shit, that's a really good question. Well, no, it would because it'd be a bit like throwing an apple up on a bus, and it, because inside the the air. Yeah, but that's that doesn't apply to sound. Because the sound is outside of the box you're in. That's what I was going to say. So you're going so fast, you leave your own... That's a really good question. If you're going so fast that you leave your own sound behind... I reckon you do. Is it pure silence? No, it's not pure silence. You'd still hear wind. Okay, so do you reckon you'd lose... But you wouldn't be able to hear the engine. You'd lose your own engine note because it's behind you. And you're going away faster than it's coming out. But it's being generated where you yeah, are. Yeah, this is, I can't. I, I can't get my head around this. No, I'm trying to build about, like a little model. No, in my no, head. no. Because it's about sound traveling to our ears from its the source. source, not and, it, and he's because at the source. Yeah, and he stays an equal distance from the source the yeah, entire time. That's that's what it is. So maybe he just can still hear it. It's for us. So for him, he's traveling with the sound, mm. but we hear the sound after he's gone past. Does it? We need a physics professional to answer this question. Yeah, the, I have so. Do you many... know anyone that did physics? I did it. This doesn't. No, I mean me. at uni. No, I. Didn't I know someone who did theoretical than... physics. Yeah, we need him. I don't know that he'd be able to answer those questions. He's more about string theory and stuff. Is that? Dark I can't matter. even. You know, like sometimes you try and build a little picture in your head, like of a man throwing a ball up and down on a train, and and he throws it out the window, and it's all different and all that. Yeah. You can build those little pictures in your head. That. I can't even begin to... Yeah, but he throws it out of the window and it hits wind resistance. There's no wind resistance on yeah. the inside of the train. But or, and you get all the weird sort of things, like if a train turns the corner and then the ball carries on its straight line trajectory and all those kind of things. That's obvious. That's easy to build the picture of in your head. But building the picture of a plane accelerating beyond its own sound, I can't... Can't get my head around it. I can't build I always that. struggle with space. I understand the concept of space. I fully understand space. Yeah. But... When I actually think about it, I can't. I just can't get my head around it. How there's just stars and stars and what, stars and, the, and, with, and there's with nothing planets. in the middle. No, but with there's stars with planets that are orbiting around their own stars with their own mm. moons and their own, you know, solar systems. But then there's multiple of those, and soon my head just goes, nope, can't work it out. Well, the numbers, Sorry. the numbers aren't the thing that gets me. I can comprehend the fact that you can look at the sky and there's a billion numbers. I actually, I don't really want to talk about space because I, I just, no. no, I will continue. But as I've made very clear in my past, my opinions on space and yes, the have biblical that. waste of money that we all yep. throw at the pointless venture that is investigating space, I just can't. Fathom. You say that, but we might have heard from intelligent I alien life. I don't care. Did you hear about that? I don't care. It's not going to enrich my life. You might have actually. We can't do it. It's still just too slow. Life. It's too slow to get there and do anything. But. Back to the mathematical or the thing. There are ways. There are not ways. There's it a Stephen Hawking backed scheme to get I've a probe to s- go. I've lost all Boring credibility lasers, for lasers. him. I've lost all credibility. Lasers. I've lost all my credibility that he had is gone. If he starts backing some harebrained scheme that can fire his wheelchair fast <laughs> enough for him to get to Mars, <laughs> it's not going to happen. It won't happen. Not in our lifetime. No, and I'm happy about that. But remember that the Ein- is it Einstein that said that nothing can travel faster than the speed of light because the speed of light is the fastest anything can travel. Well, yeah, because if you think about that, then what's beyond? If but you remember, go faster than yeah, the light but that's source, what that was his that was his hole. theory. But remember, his theory of relativity was proven wrong. <clears throat> yeah, but this one becomes a, this one is a is an. As yeah, I but so is the theory explain. of relativity. <laughs> so I was about that to, got proven wrong. Because <laughs> I'm about to explain with the with space and there just being loads of stuff. I can get the quantities of numbers I can get my head around because pure, when you don't have an edge to a world, to a to a to a, a playing field, there isn't an edge to space as you want yeah, to call it. Yeah, but that's I can't get then, my head Then obviously, then I can see that there's an infinite amount of things going yeah, on. Yeah, but they I can can't be. That. They can't be infinite. They can. No, nothing. Surely, nothing can be infinite. It can. No, they, it can't it can. be. But what the one bit I struggle with is when you say. Oh, what's like in the middle and the gap? Yeah, exactly. Nothing. Yeah, but what is nothing? Well, that's that's what that's the bit that that's the that's bit where it all matter, goes wrong. That's what they think. Or even beyond that, because no, because dark matter would be a thing. The absence of anything, because there's no there's nothing that we could and ever see as ourselves as humans experience on this earth that is nothing. 
we can't we can, we haven't built that because essentially everything our perception our views our li- on life what we see everything is built around little models that we've constructed and they're kind of set in stone when you're like <coughs> stop being <laughs> like teenage years to 20s your your brain it's why the people this theory that it becomes harder to learn after a certain thing yeah. because by this point you've built Much a model to it, you've built a model for everything your brain was plastic and it was like stre- yeah, it, yeah, it yeah, almost yeah. becomes plastic like What's the other type of plastic thing you'd call it? Whatever. Can't remember. Um, then it can no longer change or adapt its models. We don't have a model that is, n- that is nothing. That, that doesn't compute because everything has to be given a, a mass or a size or an amount, a quantity. Everything is like put into it. We essentially have a filing system of everything and it has to be a certain size and a certain amount of them which is why when we hear abstract ideas of space with infinite and nothing and these things that don't exist to us because even if you even if you take it to, and somebody goes oh what like the like air well no because there's plenty because of, there is there's loads stuff. going on there there's loads going on there but then if you when you start to go down to like a crazy level of what makes up the air there is gaps inside this inside the between particles between particles there is nothing and then there you go. Once again, boom! It, it takes a pretty special mind. But this is why millions get in, billions or trillions get invested in space, so that people can start pure trying to get answers. wastage. Yeah, it is pure wastage. You're right. Pure wastage. But it was Hawking that said that the universe might be donut shaped, which was quite interesting. So if you travel far enough, you you'll just go around come the back on yourself. But then everyone's like, okay, but what's outside the donut? We were talking about this before we came on, before we pressed the record button. Nothing. Before we recorded, press the record button, there's another another story I'd read this week that caught, caught my interest was about flat Earth. Oh yeah, <coughs> and about the group of people who call them, refer to themselves as flat Earthers, who believe that who will argue as night as day that the Earth is flat. And why do we have to put up with these people? When you the the best thing is if when you hear about how many people join the community each year and stuff. The, why? The, what is their motivation? I don't. And then and they'll stand there. I, and I heard about it. I, I was listening to a radio show this week or whatever, and um, yeah, the, a guy phoned in just out of the blue and tried to argue. He was like, "So, um, what do you think about the Earth being flat?" And he was just like, "The the, the guy, the presenter's like, what? Like, what the hell?" And then he, he's like, "So, what evidence do you have?" And obviously, the guy goes and tells the story about the boat going over the horizon and disappearing and whatever. And it's it, quite obvious. And the man then proceeds to stay there and says. Well, if you got um, a powerful enough telescope, you'd just be able to see it further away in the distance. And this guy is like, I'm just like, were you away in school, like when we did science or, or something? Like, do you live, have you not looked at the internet? They get genuinely get into their frame of mind that everything, all pictures they see, like on BBC News at the start of the weather, when it zooms in on our, on our, on our spherical globe, they must look at that and go, it's a lie. I go, like... I just don't get it. Do people do it just to purely oh, no. be different? Do they believe no. it? How? Just maybe these are people who have never seen the sea. <clears throat> maybe they just live in like right in the middle of the country and they just do not know what the sea looks like. Because if you ever like look at a picture of what the flat earth people, how they would draw a map of the earth. Pardon me, it's interesting. They break it down so that the earth... Has um, is like surrounded by ice, so the ice caps. So it's a, right, so okay. it's, a sp- it's a sphere. That the rim, the perimeter, is that ice is the North Pole. They un yeah. they unwind it around sure. it, and the theory is that there's an 150 foot ledge at the edge. What's on the other side? Oh, I don't know. They can't find out because they can't go over the ledge. <laughs> the problem is with the flat Earth theory. You can't ask too many questions because it unravels. Very, <laughs> very quickly, very quickly, very quickly, very quickly, and th- and you, but you start obviously. There's a whole group of people who you start to so have a how conversation. How do airplanes work then? Oh, they don't, I don't mind. How can you fly from Japan right the way around and back? To well, you don't go around, do you? you? Just you, I don't know. Following their map, <laughs> yeah. If you could look out, if you look out the window, the whole journey and fly in a straight line. Follow yourself in a yeah, straight but even line. If you go in a plane. Even if you fly to France, you can see the curvature of the Earth. Yeah, for God's sake, you can actually see you can the see curvature it. of the Earth. Once you go up high enough, you can see miles. You can and yeah. you go above the clouds, so you essentially have no haze or anything. 
the idiots. They are idiots. idiots. And there was a, this guy tries to set, this guy tries to do this has this idea that he was like, oh, if we can put the most powerful telescope on top of the Eiffel Tower, you'll be able to go and you'll be able to see Sydney because on his in his flat Earth, we should just do it. We should just do it with someone, someone, some rich billionaire should put up the money, buy a really expensive telescope, put it on top of the Eiffel Tower, and prove <laughs> these idiots that they're idiots. I don't think we... You don't have to prove too hard. Well, no, <laughs> we don't, but then at least they'll look stupid and I just don't the think error of their ways. I think every single time you they open their mouth, they look stupid, but they're just not bothered. I don't it's bizarre, isn't it? I just don't understand. No, I never do I. That concludes the personal messages. We continue there is with no, music. There is no better place to finish than flat earthers. Idiots. We'll, we'll just call them idiots. We're just going to call them idiots. They don't even <laughs> get... They don't even get the name Flat Earthers. I like I like conspiracy theories, but I can't even get behind this one. No, it's not a conspiracy theory. This isn't a conspiracy theory. This is just no. idiocy. It's stupid. No. Right, we've left that. So, we started at... We started at Jeremy, Jeremy Corbyn, Corbyn and his depressed vegetarian supporters. Yep. From a legit source of facts, which is great. So yeah, all you Corbyn supporters out there are depressed vegetarians. The majority of you, anyway. Apparently. They tend to be. Tend is a weird language. And yeah, we ended up talking about flat earthers. And on the way, we we experienced unwatch. 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 It's time for Kim Jong Unwatch. It's a live performance. That jingle. I might update the jingle each week. Great. I'll add another harmony layer. Brilliant. I'll harmonise with myself. But you can't wait for that. And, uh, yeah, what else did we talk about? Oh, jets. We talked about jets and yeah. space travel for Blackbird. quite a bit. Blackbird jet. Space. And space. Oh, my, my hatred for space will never end. No. Much like space. Much like space itself. Nice. <laughs> so. That's start for ten. That was start for ten. He's been Angus. He's been George. Thank Episode you. 21. Done and dusted. Boom. Mic drop. Out. Yes. Right. Um. Yeah. Holler at us on like Twitter, Facebook, wherever. Um. Yeah. And we'll be back. Thank you very much. Thank you.